I wanted to just very quickly uh, point out what was uh, my, the, the piece that we published a couple days ago on, on uh, Hartman Report, um, which was titled, Is It Too Late for Democracy? Um, and, and my point is that the Republicans right now are absolutely playing with fire. And I, I, I think, you know, when we're talking about burning down democracy here in the United States. Uh, they had just f filibustered the January 6th commission when, when I, you know, first wrote this piece. And, and the bottom line, I mean, let's just speak the truth. The people who have taken over the GOP don't want, don't like democracy. I made this point yesterday. You know, this goes back to, to Richard Nixon. They are not fans of democracy. They, they will do everything they can to stop democracy, to block democracy. And, you know, uh, this is not Dwight Eisenhower's Republican Party. And they exploit democracy's weakness by exacerbating racial tensions, shouting out encouragement to white racists, first in code, that was Nixon and Reagan, and then explicitly with, uh, with Trump. People say, well, what is it about Trump that he's got such a hold on the Republican Party? It's that he was the first president, Republican president, to actually just basically out loud say what the Republican Party has been about ever since Nixon's Southern strategy, ever since 1968 which is white racism, white supremacy. And we see it in, and white male supremacy, by the way, let me toss that in there. You see that in the, in the whole debate around abortion and women's rights and feminism and Rush Limbaugh calling, you know, feminists, feminazis and all this kind of crap. This, this is a, this is one of two major political parties in the United States has embraced this. It has become their identity. And you get these guys like Paul Ryan, you know, and, uh, sitting around going, well, I, I, we shouldn't make a personality cult in our in our party. Come on. It's not that it's a personality cult around Trump. It's it's that you know Trump is, is and it's not just Trump, by the way. You've got a bunch of elected Republicans who are saying this, and not just the the, the crazies like Matt Gates who's trying to get out of going to jail, and Mar Marjorie Trader Green who's who's just nuts. Uh, anti-Semitic racist nuts, but, you know, just nuts. Um, it's, it's, it's worse than that. It's deeper than that. It's, it's, this has been at the core of this party for a long, long time. And, I mean, they've introduced now over 400 pieces of legislation in 47 states to block your right to vote or to make it harder to vote. Joe Biden said, President Biden, he said, what I'm worried about is how un-American this whole initiative is. It's sick. It's sick. Can you imagine? I mean, this is, this is, it has reached the point where the president of the United States is calling out another party. David Sirota, my, my uh, former talk radio colleague, now he, he publishes a newsletter. Uh, he's turning it into quite a little uh, uh, journalistic enterprise. Uh, the Daily Poster, he writes, but now the, another Overton window has shifted. Now, the Overton window is the window of acceptable political debate, right? What is acceptable? Is it acceptable, for example, to talk about, uh, you know, somebody other than Lee Oswald was responsible for killing JFK, right? No, it's still not really, res it's not considered respectable, right? So the Overton window hasn't gone there yet. But the Overton window has shifted in with, with regard to voter suppression and flooding election. Well, this is what David, David, Pack, or David uh, Sirota said. He said, super PAC and dark money spending flooding elections are now the norm. And voter suppression tactics and legislation are considered by many to be just another totally permissible aspect of the political competition. That's where we stand right now. This is what we're fighting. This is what H.R. 1, the For the People Act, you know, is, is seriously and aggressively trying to challenge, trying to take on. And, and by the way, if you think that doing away with the filibuster and then passing H.R. 1 is just going to magically solve everything, think again. The first thing that's going to happen the day after that legislation is passed is it's going to be challenged by 20 states before the Supreme Court, which has been packed with right-wing whack jobs. I mean, right-wing people who are so outside the mainstream, who are so, uh, 
and, and you know, when I say nut and whack job, that's what I'm specifically referring to, is people who are outside the mainstream of political thought. They are, they are so beyond anything that, that historically was, well, I, I shouldn't say that. They're, they're so beyond anything that was historically acceptable because it was acceptable. It just was not acceptable explicitly. It had to be done in code. You had to be polite about it. Right? This, this is the old, well, you know, we used to use the N-word, and then we started using the busing word, you know, and, 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 then, and, then, and then we said tax cuts, and everybody understood what we meant. I don't think it's too late for democracy, but I think we're so close to it that I am deeply concerned. I was very worried toward the end of the Trump presidency. I am, frankly, even more worried right now.